Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. Now I'm going to start the problems on valuation of shares. The last two videos I have explained you completely the theoretical part of the chapter valuation of shares. I've explained you what is the meaning of the term shares, what do you mean by value of shares and what are the methods of calculating the value of shares. Intrinsic value is there, yield value is there and uh, dual value, dual method or fair value. All these things I have already explained. Now from here onwards, I'm going to start the problem, but the problems are based on theory. So my suggestion, don't come uh, to watch this uh, problems video. First, be perfect about the concept. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject advanced accounting new, select the videos of valuation of shares, be perfect, then you come to the problems. So before starting the problems, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems, which I have given in the link under my description. Always keep it ready, then only you can be able to understand the lectures. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. See the first problem. Problem number one. The summarized balance sheet of Bharat Company Limited as of 31st March 2004 is as follows. Particulars, equity and liability, shareholders fund. Shareholders fund consists of share capital, 5 lakh, reserves and surplus, 1 lakh 50,000. Non-current liabilities, we have long-term borrowings, 1 lakh. Current liabilities, 70,000. Total, 8 lakh 20,000. Now, assets consist of non-current assets, fixed assets, tangible assets 4,50,000 and intangible asset goodwill 80,000. Other non-current assets are preliminary expenses. Preliminary expenses are fictitious asset. It should not be considered while calculating value of shares. Then current assets are 2,80,000 total. Notes, share capital. The share capital 5 lakh consists of 50,000 equity share of rupees 10 each, fully paid. And reserves and surplus consist of general reserve 1,50,000. Long term borrowing consists of 10% debentures 1 lakh. This is the complete balance sheet given. Now the goodwill is independently valued at 60,000. So here balance sheet goodwill value was 80,000. But uh, the present independent value of goodwill is 60,000. So we should take the present value not the book value. The present value of goodwill is 60,000 and other fixed assets are 4,30,000. In the balance sheet, fixed assets are given 4,50,000. But in adjustment, it is saying 4,30,000. So we should take the present realizable value, 4,30,000. There was a contingent liability of 30,000 which has become payable. Contingent liability means conditional liability. Depends on some condition. That means it may become a full-fledged liability or not. But here it is given that contingent liability has become payable. That means it has become actual liability. It is unrecorded liability. That uh, contingent liability was not shown in the balance sheet. Now we have to uh, take into account the unrecorded liability, which has become payable. Ascertain the value of share according to net assets method. Net assets method means intrinsic value method. The method which is based on the assets and liabilities or net worth. See here. Valuation of share according to net assets basis or we can call it as intrinsic value. Assets. Goodwill 60,000. Present value given. Fixed asset 4,30,000. Present value. And current assets as usual book value. If present value is not given, we take the book value, balance sheet value. So 2,80,000. The total of assets 7,70,000. From this, we subtract the outside liability. The outside liability consists of 10% debentures 1 lakh and current liability 70,000. Whatever balance sheet values are given, the same values. But apart from that, in adjustment it is given, there was a contingent liability which has become payable. Now it's a uh, liability. Now we have to record it. So contingent liability now payable 30,000. So total of outside liability 2 lakh. So 7,70,000 minus 2,5,70,000 is the funds available. From this we deduct preference capital 
and arrears of preferential dividend. But in our problem, there is no preferential capital, no preference dividend. Preferential capital dash. So 5,70,000 is the amount available for equity shareholders or net assets. We can call it as net assets or we can call it as amount available for equity shareholders. Now, number of equity shares 50,000. In the problem it is given in notes, 50,000 equity share of 10 is fully paid file. Act. The number of equity shares 50,000. Now, formula for intrinsic value per share is amount available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. So, amount available is 5,70,000 divided by number of shares are 50,000. So, 5,70,000 by 50,000, 11.40 is the intrinsic value per share. That's it. Now, second problem. A company limited equity capital comprises 10,000 equity share of 100 each fully paid and 10,000 equity share of 100 each 75 paid up. That means first category 10,000 shares are fully called and paid up. Second category 10,000 shares are there which are partly called up. Out of 100 rupees, 75 rupees has been called up. Still 25 rupees are uncalled. The company has not called up. So in this problem, two classes of shares, fully paid up and partly paid up. Then the net value of the assets is 50 lakh. Compute the intrinsic value of equity share. The net assets, that means all assets minus liabilities. The net assets of the company is 50 lakh. So you can see net value of all assets 50 lakh. To this we add notional call on partly paid shares. Notional means imaginary, not real. The company has not called up. We, but we assume that the remaining part is also called up. Out of 100 rupees, 75 rupees are called up. 25 rupees are uncalled. Now we will make a call. So 10,000 shares into 25 rupees, 2,50,000 rupees the company will get. This is the notional call. Then total amount available for equity share was 52,50,000. Now easily, total number of shares are 10,000 first fully paid. Second 10,000 partly paid, but we have made a notional call. When we make a notional call, this also has become fully paid. Now we have total all shares fully paid, 20,000. Now value of each fully paid share, the 52 lakh 50,000 divided by 20,000, you get 262.50. 262.50 is the intrinsic value of fully paid up share, right? Now value of partly paid up share, so first we take what is the value of fully paid up share, it is 262.5. From this we deduct the uncalled amount. The uncalled amount is 25 rupees. So subtract 25, value of partly paid share is 237.5. Remember here only notional call we have, we have made. We have not made the actual call, only imaginary call we have made. So fully paid up share, the value is 262.5. Partly paid up share, the value is 237.5. Two problems completed. Now, see the problem number three. Problem number three. From the following balance sheet of X Limited, find out the value of each share. Particulars, equity and liability, shareholders fund, share capital 4 lakh, reserves and surplus 5 lakh 60,000. Non-current liability, long-term borrowing, 6% debentures, 1 lakh. Current liability, 1 lakh. Total of the liability side, 11 lakh 60,000. Assets, non-current assets, fixed assets, tangible 9 lakh, non-current investments are 80,000 and other non-current assets, preliminary expenses, 20,000. Remember, preliminary expenses is a fictitious asset, imaginary asset, don't consider. Then current assets are 1 lakh 60,000, total. Notes, share capital 40,000 equity share of 10 each 4 lakh. Reserves and surplus consist of reserves 5 lakh, PL account 60,000, 5 lakh 60,000. That's all. If nothing is given, when we are given the balance sheet, that means we have to apply net assets method or intrinsic value method. Now see, third problem, calculation of intrinsic value. Fixed assets 9 lakh, whatever balance sheet value given. Then investments 80,000. Then current assets 1 lakh 60,000. 
total assets of 11,41. Out of which two outside liabilities are there, debentures and current liability. Total 2 lakh. So 9 lakh 40,000 is the net worth. From this, we deduct the preferential capital, but there is no preferential capital. For the sake of understanding, I am writing. Otherwise, if you don't write also, it will be okay. So preferential capital dash. So 9,40,000 is the amount available for equity shareholders. And total number of shares are given in the problem 40,000. We know the formula for intrinsic value of share. Amount available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. So 9,40,000 divided by 40,000 you get 23.50. That's it. This is the intrinsic value per share. Next. Problem number four. From the following particulars, calculate the value of an equity share. 1,000, 10% preference share of 100 each. First time we are coming across preference shares are there. 40,000 equity share of 10 each, rupees 8 per share paid up. So out of 10 rupees, 8 rupees are paid up. 2 rupees are uncalled. Then expected profit before tax. See, in the previous three problems, we are given the balance sheet. So we have applied intrinsic value. But here in this problem, balance sheet is not given. We are given the profit. So we apply yield method to calculate the value of share by yield method because profits are given. So expected profit before tax, 2,50,000. And rate of tax, 40%. Transfer to general reserve every year, 20% of profit. Normal rate of earnings is 18%. So this yield method is based on rate of return. Normal rate of return is given 18%. We need the expected rate of return of the company. Right? Now see carefully. Calculation of yield value of equity share. Profit before tax 2,50,000. Before tax. Now from before tax we deduct the tax 40%. 40% 40 of 2,50,000 1 lakh. Then 1 lakh 50,000 is the profit after tax. From profit after tax, every year 20% is transferred to general reserve that is given in the problem. If it is not given, we would not have taken. It is given in the problem that every year 20% will be transferred to reserve. So transfer to general reserve 20% of 1,50,000, 30,000. 1,20,000 remaining. Now this is the profit available for both the shareholders, equity and preference. But according to law, the dividend on Preference share capital should be paid first. Fixed rate of dividend. So less preference share dividend. 10% of 1 lakh. In the problem it is given 10% debentures rupees 1 lakh. So 10% of 1 lakh is 10,000. 10,000 rupees preference dividend. So 1 lakh 20 minus 10. 1 lakh 10,000 is the profit available for equity shareholders. Now we need what is the X? Expected rate of return ERR. Expected rate of return, the formula is profit available for equity shareholders divided by equity share capital into 100. This is the formula. Now, again, I repeat always maintain a notebook while watching the video. Write it down all the formulas which I am explaining because every problem will come across the same situation. Almost 90, 80-90% points are same. Only one or two points will differ from one problem to another problem. So always make a note. Running notes you maintain. So expected rate of return ERR is equal to profit available divided by equity share capital into 100. Profit available 1,10,000. Equity share capital is given in the problem 3,20,000 into 100. So 34.375 is the ERR expected rate of return. Now yield value. First time we are applying the formula to calculate yield value of equity share. Yield value is equal to expected rate of return ERR divided by normal rate of return into paid up value per share. In the problem expected rate of return just now we have calculated 34.375 divided by normal rate of return is given in the problem last sentence 18%. That means in the similar type of business the investor are expecting 18% return. That is the normal rate of return. Into paid up value per share. 8 rupees is the paid up value. 
actually face value of each share is 10 rupees but the company has called up only 8 rupees so multiply by 8 so 34.375 divided by 18 into 8 15.38 rupees 15.38 is the yield value of equity share that's it now fifth problem from the following particulars calculate the value of an equity share 10,000 equity share of 10 each 1 lakh profits again profits are given that means we have to apply yield method the profits for the last three years 70,000 60,000 80,000 we take the average it is a practice of the company to transfer 20% of profit to reserve after calculating average profit from average profit transfer 20% to general reserve it's the normal course in the business shares of similar companies quoted in the stock exchange yield 15% on the market value this 15% is the normal rate of return all the investors are expecting 50% from this type of companies or this type of businesses so this is the NRR so we need to calculate ERR expected rate of return is not given once if you calculate ERR so ERR divided by NRR into paid up value per share that will give you the yield value of share now here average profit 70, 60, 80 divided by 3 is 70,000 average profit from average profit subtract transfer to reserve it is given in the problem if it is given then only we should take otherwise we should not take so here it is given transfer 20% of 70,000, 40,000 now remaining 56,000 is the profit available for equity shareholders we don't have any preference capital if there is preference capital we would have deducted the preference dividend but here preference capital is not there so this is the profit available for equity shareholders now ERR expected rate of return profit available divided by equity capital into 100 so profit available 56,000 equity share capital 1 lakh equity share capital 1 lakh given in the problem into 100 56% is the ERR expected rate of return now yield value of equity share is equal to expected rate of return divided by NRR normal rate of return into paid up value per share so 56 divided by 15 normal rate of return is 15% given into 10 37.33 rupees 37.33 is the yield value per equity share that's all so in this video five problems i have explained completely if you want the perfect knowledge watch the video twice thrice maintain running notes definitely you will get a good command on this topic of valuation of shares ha, inshallah we will continue our next problem in the next video so if you are satisfied give a like to the video share my channel subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and by the super thanks which is given below my video inshallah we will continue the next problem in the next video.